If you take four Burj Khalifas and stack them on top of each other, they'll be just slightly taller than the underwater mountain that oceanographers recently discovered. This giant sits in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Chile. It's part of an underwater mountain range that has some pretty wild things, like a coral garden almost as large as three standard tennis courts for doubles, and some marine species we've never seen before. A group of scientists from the Schmidt Ocean Institute explored the mountain on a special research vessel. They were on a mission that lasted for 28 days. During this time, they used a high-tech sonar system attached to the bottom of the ship. They send sound waves down to the bottom of the ocean. When these sound waves hit the seafloor, they bounce back up to the ship. By measuring how long it takes for the sound waves to travel down and come back up, the scientists can figure out the shape and features of the seafloor, like hills, valleys, and mountains. Right now, we only have detailed maps for about 26% of the seafloor, just a little more than one quarter. But the seafloor covers about 71% of the whole Earth's surface. The team of scientists used a special underwater robot to study one of the mountain's ridges and found a whole bunch of creatures. One of them was an octopus looking like a little ghost. It was all white and the scientists nicknamed it the Casper octopus because it reminded them of the friendly ghost Casper. No one had ever seen this kind of octopus in the Southern Pacific Ocean before, so it doesn't even have a real scientific name yet. The team also found another strange animal, an underwater creature looking like spaghetti. These guys are very rare. The scientists also recorded the first official footage of a special rare type of squid. Before this, they only knew about it from a few lifeless specimens they had found. Over three expeditions to the Nazca Ridge, the scientists managed to explore and map 25 underwater mountains. They also cataloged 150 species they had never seen before. And there are 20 more potentially new species just from the latest expedition. They're going to share all these discoveries with a group called the Ocean Census. Their goal is to identify about 100,000 new species in the next 10 years. They hope to understand the deep ocean better and find ways to protect all the amazing life down there in this way. There are more than 14,500 identified seamounts, or underwater mountains, in the world's oceans. But satellite data and data from survey ships shows us there could be over 100,000 seamounts. Most of them are leftovers of extinct volcanoes. You can mostly find them in places where Earth's giant puzzle pieces, the tectonic plates, meet and move apart. When it happens, hot magma from inside the Earth rises up to fill the gaps. When the magma cools down, it creates new crust and sometimes builds up into seamounts or volcanoes. Seamounts are also formed near subduction zones. These are areas where two plates are pushing into each other. When one plate is forced down under another, it dives deep into the Earth's hot inside. The crust that goes down melts and turns into magma again. This hot magma rises back towards the surface because it's lighter than the surrounding rock. When it reaches the seafloor, it erupts, and volcanoes and seamounts are born. Seamounts are normally shaped like cones, but some leave craters, ridges, or flat tops, as if someone cut off the tip of a cone. The general requirement for a seamount to get that title is to be at least 3,300 feet tall from the bottom of the ocean. That's about three times as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Mauna Kea definitely deserves to be called a seamount and also the highest mountain on Earth. Yep, Everest has nothing on it if you compare their heights from the bottom to the top. Mount Everest is very heavy because it sits on top of a thick, dense continental crust. This crust already has a lot of weight pushing down on it from the mountain above, so it can't support much more height. Mauna Kea is on a thinner oceanic crust, which has less rock above it and more water. 
The oceanic crust doesn't have as much weight pushing down on it, so it can hold up a taller mountain like Mauna Kea. This seamount beauty is about 1 million years old. It was in its active stage of life hundreds of thousands of years ago. The last time it erupted was 6 to 4,000 years ago, and it's sleeping now, but could still wake up at some point in the distant future. Even though it's in Hawaii, Mauna Kea has an alpine climate. The temperatures can change a lot from day to night, but they don't change very much from season to season. Snow at an altitude of 11,000 feet and higher can fall here at any time of year, but it happens the most often from October to April. It didn't stop the ancient Hawaiians, who lived in caves at these heights and quarried basalt for cutting tools. The top of Mauna Kea is one of the best places in the world for looking at stars and planets because the conditions up there are just perfect for it. First, the summit is in a very dry area, which is important for astronomers. When scientists study light from stars and galaxies, they need clear air without moisture, like water droplets in the air. This dry air helps them see better when they look through telescopes. Second, the summit is higher than what is called the inversion layer. This means that most clouds are below the top of the mountain, and astronomers can see the sky clearly without clouds blocking their view. The air at the top of Mauna Kea is very stable, and it helps see stars and planets very clearly. Finally, the mountain is far away from bright city lights, which makes the night sky really dark. There's an interesting group of seamounts not so far away from Mauna Kea, north of the main Hawaiian islands. You can meet Mendelssohn, Gershwin, Beethoven, Verdi, and other famous composers here. And yep, all of them are seamounts. They were all discovered in the middle of the 20th century. It was the time when modern oceanography was just beginning, and there was a lot of research work in the Pacific Ocean. Hundreds, then thousands of seamounts were mapped, and whoever had to name them probably ran out of names or decided to honor the talented and famous musicians. There are also mathematician and mapmaker seamounts. There are about 25 members of the musician seamounts group, and they were formed back in the Cretaceous period, during the time when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. They built up over millions of years. Some of them made it above the ocean surface and became islands, and others are still hiding underwater. Studying seamounts helps scientists understand how the Earth was shaped by volcanic eruptions and the movement of tectonic plates. They often attract mining companies that want to collect valuable minerals that gather around them, thanks to hydrothermal activity. Seamounts are also home to many different kinds of marine life, so they're important fishing areas. You can find more than 80 types of fish that people catch for food around these underwater mountains. Researchers are especially interested in how seamounts interact with ocean currents. These interactions may help create special places called hotspots, where new species can form and where there is lots of biodiversity. Scientists also think that seamounts could serve as safe havens or stepping stones for sea creatures in large areas of the ocean that are otherwise empty and barren. They want to know how the populations of animals living mm. on seamounts change when the ocean's currents shift and if the ecosystems that are disturbed by human activities can bounce back. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.